freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode number 239 of Gun Freedom Radio, where we engage, we educate, and we inform. We are brought to you by azfirearms.com, your nationwide hometown gun shop. I am one of your hosts, Cheryl Todd. And I'm the other guy, Dan Todd. Our theme today is Latina Locked and Loaded. And our guest is Johanna Rosalie. Johanna, otherwise known as the Latina Locked and Loaded, was inspired into action by the 2019 Second Amendment rally held in Washington, D.C. She and her husband, Orlando, the Puerto Rico, the Puerto Rico Republican. Uh, <laughs> Puerto Rican <laughs> pistolero, easy go for us to say. Go ahead. They live in Florida near Parkland, and after the murders at that local high school, <clears throat> Joe discovered the importance of speaking up to protect our constitutional protections and realizing that Latino American media often aligned her culture with the anti gun sentiment. She choos focus chooses to focus on destigmatization. Now I'm doing it. <laughs> Desensitization uh, of gun ownership in both the female and the Hispanic communities. Welcome to the show, Joe. Thank you so much for having me. Well, this is very exciting. We actually met in person for the first time at that 2019 rally in Washington, D.C. I know they're gearing up uh, to get ready for a second run of it in 2020. And since we are still in COVID season, as we sit in the uh, studio right now, it's Wednesday, August 5th of 2020, anything can happen. So I don't know if it's going to happen or if it's going to be another virtual digital uh, rally, but um, it certainly was a wonderful uh, event and gave us a chance to meet each other. So um, what, what took you there? Um, well... Like you mentioned, I, my husband, Rolando, and I, we actually recently got married. So at the time we were just, uh, he was just my fiance. He and I had started to get more motivated um, to get involved with what's going on in, 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 you know, with gun control after Parkland happened. Because I was actually um, very, very close by outside with my four-year-old, well, at the time, uh, two-year-old niece um, at a little outdoor playground when everything was going on. Um, at the time, I didn't know, you know, I finished up playing with my knees on the swings and babysitting and went home and then saw the news and was shocked. Um, and that was really one of the moments that changed me. Uh, I'd always been uh, into guns, owned guns. Well, not always, but had been for a few years. But that was the moment that made me realize I should always be carrying and I should start being more vocal, which was um, something I wasn't because of living in a very liberal area and having family members who didn't believe in guns. Um, so we started getting more involved on social media, particularly my husband. And I, he told me, honey, I want to go to this two-way rally. And I said, that sounds like a great idea. And then that's what took us there. I think he was actually the first person to sign up for that. Um, and we got lucky enough to attend a breakfast with people like Cheryl and her husband, <laughs> uh, Kevin Dixie, of uh, uh, the real NOC was there as well. He was a great speaker. Um, our friend Argo J. Tony Simon. So many of the people, uh, Carrie Sloan from We the Female. So many people that we had seen online and that were our inspirations were there and they talked to us before the rally. Um, and I'll be completely honest, that was actually that day, that weekend is what, what 
led to this moment. I, I was not at, until that day, I was not planning or hoping or, or thinking about being more vocal publicly. I was going to be the woman behind the man and that, that weekend changed everything. So Johanna, that me, gives me goosebumps. Yeah, first of all, right? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Dan. To be, able to, meet, to be able to meet some, you know, really powerful people right at the start. That's awesome. Cause some of those guys that you mentioned and, and girls, they're awesome. But yeah. uh, so has it changed? Like when you go to family events and stuff, mm. does the, and do the, the gun word ever come up and how, how do you react to that? With your family? Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I come from a very, very close knit family. Um, it's my, my, I, I'm the youngest of three, and my siblings are very highly educated individuals with very strong opinions. Um, so my siblings and I clash quite a bit on the subject of guns. Um, we have come to terms with, uh, you know, agreeing to disagree, although I still find a way to bring it up quite frequently. Um, <laughs> My parents are a different story because they're conflicted. My mother grew up with guns. Um, my grandfather, this is in rural Colombia. Um, my grandfather was a blacksmith and a gunsmith. He was quite the Renaissance man. Uh, my mom has very fond memories and very great stories about how my grandfather made her her first rifle and took her out hunting. Uh, That's so awesome. So, yeah. So it was, it's very confusing to me as, as a child to hear these stories and then have her turn around and say, but I don't believe in guns now. So she and my dad have been able to have conversations about that and made her feel conflicted as well because she sees that it doesn't align with what she really does believe. It's just that we're so brainwashed in our community by the media. Um, I grew up watching Spanish TV, Spanish media, so it is very biased. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's where we're at. <laughs> so, sure. you know, you, you have those conversations and, you know, I, I can't understand it because uh, do, do they not care how to defend and protect their families or do they think that every gun owner is a um, non-educated, irresponsible person? What, you know, what's What's the reasoning? I, I don't get it. I, <laughs> it's because you've been on this side of the <laughs> yeah. fence for your whole life. And so they, they're probably thinking the same thing about us. I don't get you people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's kind of it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, my sister has been the one who I'm actually surprised because she can see it. She can see, she's smart enough to know what I'm talking about, but she just can't get over that, the statistics. I don't know where they come up with the statistics. She's a, she's a physician. So unfortunately, they are fed these statistics of if you have a gun in the home, you are more likely to get shot. Um, if, you know, they act like a gun is suddenly going to go off, like the gun be sitting behind me is going to suddenly get up, grow legs, and shoot me. Um, so <laughs> that's why. I've keeping my eyes on it just in yeah, case. I one, got your I, back. I'm, I'm <laughs> measuring <laughs> that one in the back there. <laughs> But, you know, they, one of the statistics that they use is it doesn't matter if you're the victim or the, the one that stopped the crime, that counts as a shooting, you know, yeah. it, and yeah. that, so I think that's part of it, you know. Yeah, my mother has brought that up. Um, she's a very religious person, uh, very Catholic, grew up in the church, and one of the things that bothers her is that she feels like me being a, a gun owner and carrying a gun is going to somehow bring me to sin, you know, by defending my life. And, and my arguments about that is, so you'd rather me be the victim. So mm -hmm. she, again, is conflicted. Once I bring that up, she's like, well, I don't really know how I feel now. So for her, it's definitely a struggle. She's, she's, you know, got both of those. It something, it will, again, statistically, according to them, I'm more likely to be shot or shoot somebody. So my counter well, argument to that is, well, now I have a, you know, a greater chance of surviving if I am yes. attacked. Well, yeah. you know, they're right. If, if you don't have a gun in your house and nobody brings a gun into your house, you can't get <laughs> shot in your house. Okay. Yeah. You also, you can't have a knife and you can't have electricity because your house could burn down. You know, there's so, there so you go. much. Yeah. 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 Um, so you and uh, Rolando, the Puerto Rican Pistolero, you guys really dove in full force uh, after that rally in DC, which to me tells me how important it is for 
others to just live out our values and speak up about our values because it, it set a spark off in, in the two of you and others that we know that were present there that day. But you guys even started your own podcast recently. I mean, that's yes. a big step. This is a lot of work, this, this radio show podcast thing. And so uh, well, to make that commitment. Rolando is in IT, I heard. That's true. So yes. it's not as hard as like it is for us. That's true. We're always <laughs> scratching our heads and kicking the, the side of the machine like, like we used to do with our TVs and our cars. But anyway, <laughs> um, so uh, talk to us about the, the podcast. Sure. So that we're actually um, on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. on YouTube. And as you mentioned, Rolando is a, a techie guy. So it actually wasn't that hard for us because we ended up having a lot of the technology already present. Um, we're both gamers, video gamers. Um, and we never got into streaming for, you know, it's just not our style. We're actually very quiet, introverted people. But we always like the possibility of doing something. So it kind of just became like the perfect setup. Like we already had some of this. We already have very powerful computers and microphones and, and cameras and stuff. So we said, hey, this is, this is like perfect. Let's just get a few more things and put it together. Um, and the reason why we went for it was because, yes, there's a lot of podcasts, but it really does help to have other people out there that, you know, look like you or sound like you um so and then bring a different you know voice to it so one of the things that we do on the podcast is we go over the constitution in spanish so every every episode we go and at the end of the show and do an amendment in spanish so i'm that's so excited about <laughs> yeah. that you're my hero yes <laughs> that's unbelievable that's 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 great that is thanks fantastic so you know when we first opened when we first had our gun shop and cheryl and i you know were a lot younger <laughs> we'd go to events and we had an auction we have az firearms and we have pot of gold auctions two separate things and we'd go to mm -hmm. events and people say what do you do for a living and we don't know who they are so we'd mm -hmm. say well we have an auction house and a gun shop real quietly yeah. and we were it we started to realize hey are we embarrassed that we have a gun shop and and i think the thing that you're doing is very valuable because you're going to get people, especially Latino, right, that are maybe kind of a little embarrassed about having a gun, and you're going to show them that there's no nothing wrong with having a gun. Constitution says you can have it, and I, I think it's really good what you're doing, and be, be strong with that, right? Thank you, yeah. No, that's definitely one of the, um, the things that is important as – Gun owners, this was actually a topic of our last uh, podcast, was there that people who actually care about the Second Amendment are a minority within the minority of gun owners. Um, because how many people do you see that are into hunting or just like guns for the, you know, as, as, as a hobby, but don't know anything about what's going on in current events in terms of, oh, did you, you could have a conversation with your, your buddy and say, hey, uh, did you hear about what's going on and with this this new proposal and they'll have no idea what you're talking about so that's why it's really important for all gun owners to get involved in paying attention to what's going on and talk about it with other people so that they can be aware of what's going on as well right um and so when you mentioned that you and rolando are normally you know quiet and introverted people <laughs> I think that right there is why your voice speaks so loudly because you're not one of these uh, people that just is, you know, darting around trying to find the spotlight. Oh, well, what if I said this? Well, how about if I phrased it that, that way? Uh, you just truly are speaking something that it, it just can't stay quiet about. And I, I think that, um, you know, for, for not any reason to, you know, be YouTube famous or social media famous or any of those kinds of things, um, yeah. you're doing it for pure reasons, and that speaks so loudly. Uh, I, that's absolutely true. Um, a lot of people don't know this because we're the millennial generation, uh, but Roland and I had been off of social media for years prior to this. Um, I think I opened up a, uh, a, sorry, an Instagram in 2019. I have a Facebook 
that I, I was famously known amongst my friends um, and my volunteer groups that they never knew what I would pop up on Facebook as because I always had a fake name or, you know, close it down <laughs> and a few years later come back. <laughs> so I've never been into social media. I've never been into being Insta famous or, you know, people knowing who I am. So it was, that was one of the struggles is having yeah. to, to be more vocal was unfortunately putting yourself out there and uh, it worked out. So is well, your- it is definitely working out and it's to the, to our benefit, to the benefit right. of our, the generation coming up behind you it, millennials, right? My grandchildren, if we don't do what we can now for in our generation, what are we leaving them? So thank you so much for, for fighting your way through all the discomfort. Cause I, I can understand that and, and being vocal. So your, uh, your podcast, is it in, is it in Spanish? It's in English. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like doing it in Spanish only would be a disservice because the majority of people of Latino background do speak English in America at this point. Uh, and I think that's actually a sad thing. Um, a lot of my friends who are Hispanic don't speak Spanish or speak it brokenly. So I'm trying, we're trying to kind of service both communities, the, you know, first, second generation Hispanics who still have their culture, you know, and this mindset of this culture um, that we were supposed to have according to, to, you know, the media. Um, And also reach out to people like my parents who may not speak English well and try to educate them more about what their constitution is. So we try to find the middle ground. I love that. That's, That's great. Our that whole is show awesome. is about finding the middle ground, you know, people that, that you're not quite sure what this whole gun thing is about, you know? And so, you know, I totally appreciate that you, because I think that's where the rich soil really is anyway, is right there in the center. Well, our store is kind of uh, in uh, a, a mixed area, mixed culture area. And I get so irritated when I can't speak Spanish because <laughs> we, I, I lost so much at school by not doing that. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. trying to learn because it would really help. I didn't realize how many people that can't speak English that are in Arizona. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. They're yeah. valuable people. They're they're important people, and, and I need to hear them, and yeah. I can't yeah. because I can't speak Spanish. You have to get that yeah. rose, rose stone or whatever yeah. that program is, that app that teaches you how to. <laughs> I've had. Seven, I have one of those. <laughs> I've had seven years of Spanish through the course of my high school and college, and I still can just about ask where the restroom is. She Don't can, be a style banyo. That's it. That's she can like order all Mexican that will food. stick to my brain. She can order yeah. Mexican food. Yeah. That's about it. But um, but yeah. anyway, what uh, coming into this kind of with fresh eyes, I think that you and, and Rolando have, um, and from a, a millennial perspective and from, you know, having active conversations with people you love and value, but who you disagree with, um, man, what a unique perspective you bring. Uh, what do you think of the current state of the fight against the second amendment? Like, do you f- feel like any ground is ever made to, to put the line back to shall not be infringed or is it forever moving away from, from what our founders had? Uh, well, unfortunately, I think we're in a very uh, pivotal point in our history right now with, I don't know, I'm sure you have seen the proposed gun control um, that Joe Biden has put out there uh, as part of his platform. And I think that moves the line forward in the opposite direction, very much so. Up until this point, the politics of gun control has been like a, a frog in on the stove in water, and they've been slowly turning up the heat. And you know, it's been little by little, inch by inch, we've been losing our rights. And unfortunately, the politics have now moved towards the well. Now we're just going to be blatant and say we will, heck yeah, we will ban your guns, and we will you know, put limits on how often you should buy a gun. They're trying to get rid of uh, guns and ammo online, which unfortunately, thanks to the ammo shortages, is, might be the only way to get ammo. So the, the fight is actually, I feel like we're losing ground quickly. So that's why I feel like right now is the moment to get as many people woken up about this um, so that they can stop that line from being pushed to the point of no return. 
Mm -hmm. Well, the COVID's added 2.5 million new gun owners, so that could be a little bit of help if we can get everybody to talk. The 2.5 million people need to talk to other people and communicate and and let them know. And also understand that it's not just, okay, so now I own this tool. I also own the responsibilities that come with it, which is the training, of course, and uh, I think the advocacy and also understanding our founding documents and voting appropriately. <laughs> yes. That's going to be the hard part is, is uh, taking it all the way to the polls to, to help it make a difference. Well, I just have to say, we've been on the air for about 30 minutes and I've had a little line to watch that gun in the background. It has not moved one <laughs> millimeter of an inch. You have a lazy gun. It's I hate AR to tell too. you that. It's, it's an AR. It's not... That's okay. actually that is that uh that is uh, a a Thompson Center 1022. Oh, it's a, okay. It's a little uh, bit. I just yeah, see the top. Go. That's why. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why it didn't move. <laughs> They're a little. It's slower. one of the less scary guns, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. It's just one of those little two twenty two p shooters, right? Yeah. Um. So why? Uh. I mean, we kind of danced around this and touched on it a little bit already, but why are Latinos specifically the focus of your advocacy? Uh, well, like I said, right now is definitely the time to wake everybody up. So we need to focus on the people who are unfortunately still, to use the continue the metaphor, still sleeping on this. Um, so minorities, women, Latinos, Black, Asians, they are need to realize what they have right now in their in their constitution that is going to be taken away. So since that is you know, my background, I I feel that the responsibility to focus on them and say, hey, you know, this is something that's important, you know, wake up, pay attention, start caring about your rights. And I feel like Latinos and women are something that I can work towards because, again, people like to see people that look like them or sound like them or speak like them um, as examples. So we're trying to be out there and show that it's not something that goes against our culture. It's something that actually ties in with our culture. Um, and kind of just say, Hey, wake up, um, pay attention, start caring. It can save your life. It can save, you know, this country from, if you want to take it all the way there, that's what the, the original intention of the second amendment was. And also we have historically, if you look at certain countries, um, we should be a culture that believes in guns. If you want to look at Cuba and Venezuela, those are prime examples of what would happen if your Second Amendment were taken away. Uh, most close, you know, time-wise is Venezuela. I, I've been alive long enough to have seen Venezuela be one of the most prosperous of countries in, this, in, in South America. We always used it as, a, you know, the best of us, if you want to say, um, in terms of countries, prosperity, culturally, they were awesome. They were, you know, amazing, never having problems, you know, like Colombia, where my parents were from. Uh, A lot of the poor people would try to sneak into Venezuela. And then it turned, the tides turned. Now Chavez came in in the 90s. And one of the first things he did, I think it was in 1995. I can't remember the exact year. But one of the first things he did was he took away guns. Mm -hmm. And that was a slippery slope. Things continued to progress into socialism, then communism, pretty much. And the people tried to stage a coup too late and there's no way for them to win it because they don't have guns. Same thing happened in Cuba. So we just need to look at our, our you know, sisters and brothers elsewhere that are less fortunate and see what went wrong and don't let that happen to us. It's so true. And it seems so blatantly obvious um, through, through my eyes anyway, when we were able to watch how quickly Uh, Venezuela went from, like you said, being such a prosperous place and such a rich uh, nation with with, uh, resources um, to suddenly, I mean, really, it was in the span of about five years, starvation, Mm -hmm. right? The people are just subjected to all kinds of of horrors. And then there's people in America going, hey, yeah, that whole communist thing, that whole socialist thing, that looks amazing to us. What? Because you get free stuff. No, you don't. For a while. (laughs) No, you don't. That's what I was told. You get Uh, free stuff, right? You get to starve for free, I guess. Uh, (laughs) You know, but... 
Go ahead. I got to watch the progression happen because, like I said, I, I grew up in a very, very, very Hispanic household. So um, we didn't have CNN on. We had Telemundo on and, and Univision on when I came home from school. So, you know, every every night they would have a story about Venezuela. And I got to see that the, the slow progression mm-hmm. and you get to see the stories and of coming out of kids starving. And then you hear people saying that's not true. And I'm like, you guys weren't paying attention because that wasn't on your TVs, but it is true. And it's not something we want in this country. Right. Absolutely. It's like a a slow moving train wreck. Sort of like, Mm -hmm. um, you know, it started, you know, 1934 is when they started attacking us with our firearms and it's, and it's, it was slow for a while in 1968, it got more momentum and then it got more and more and more. And now it's like, and then the deal about the mask, who would ever thought that the government could tell everybody on this country that we have to wear a mask, you know, yeah, and then what's next. Yes, and so this exactly. is, to me, this is a test to see how far things can be pushed. Absolutely. But, well, every day is a test, yeah. uh, I think, when it comes to that. Um, so what then do you think beyond uh, us sitting here talking into these microphones, which is powerful because with your podcast and what we do here on this show, uh, being on the internet makes you worldwide. We have audiences, whenever I check my analytics, I'm always like, oh my goodness, what people are listening in like, you know, Sweden, what, why are they, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or wherever it might be. And uh, it, it's such an honor that people in other countries are caring, are concerned, are interested in what we're talking about. Um, but what do you think the current gun community Okay, that's always got to be in air quotes, because what is the gun community, right? Uh, What can we do to help expand and welcome the millions upon millions of brand new gun owners, particularly women and minorities? Um, Honestly, it's talking and being welcoming and how we approach people. Um, I see a lot of the current gun community is very tactical and kind of look down on people when they don't hold their gun right or their choice of gun or what they're wearing or what holster they have and they need to realize hey these people are brand new um and we need to be welcoming and and people don't realize how much that turns them off Mm -hmm. i still remember when i was a fairly new gun person and i went to a gun store that's very very popular down here in south florida and I usually go to this gun store with my, you know, significant other, but this particular time I didn't. He went off to look at some AR he was, you know, oogling on a, at a different counter. And I went to the, I had a very specific, I want this, and, I, and that's what I'm going to leave the store with. And I ended up leaving the store with nothing because of how I was treated at the counter. Um, mm-hmm. I got talked down to, I got mansplained, and I think the young man at the counter thought he was doing a good thing by trying to direct me to what he thought was good for me. Um, But the way he talked to me and and his approach was a turnoff. Um, Mm. And if I had been someone else, I may have left the store and never bought a gun. Uh, I left the store and went and bought the gun online (laughs) that I wanted. Mm -hmm. But Mm -hmm. um, that's not, that's not every person. That's not every woman. Um, You know, some people, treading into this murky, you know, gun world from, let's say some, from a culture or a perspective of background that used to be, you know, guns are scary. That is actually the most important thing. The first person that you interact with um, may make the difference between you turning into pro-gun or staying behind and saying, you know what, maybe this, this was, I was right and I shouldn't have liked guns or never should have asked about guns. Mm. So right now, more than anything, we need we have all these people starting to ask those questions and we have to be very careful about how we approach them and be welcoming and not critical and yeah that's what we can do it's the more people we have in our corner right now the better off we are absolutely and you know there are um there are people out there that would say you know again the the gun behind you the fact that it's a 22 what's the point of a 22 like why would you even own something like that and, and it's like, why are you so judgy? Why don't you just let me own what I like to own, which actually the ammo is a lot cheaper, right? And it's 
right now very much more available than like say the nine millimeter. Don't, so you, I can... know, don't you know the real reason that gun's back there? Why? <laughs> it's a it twenty-two, doing? right? What's it doing? There's their safe is full. It won't fit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let it go. Okay. <laughs> I remember back in the late seventies, I had a gun shop and it, what a different environment that was. And it wasn't like when a woman, well, yeah, when a woman came in, he's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed by it, but it was, it was a different culture, but they did it with the guys too. A guy would come in and they would try to act like, Oh, I'm the one behind the counter. I'm the expert. You come to me and bow to me and I will sell you what I think you should own today. And mm -hmm. it's a terrible way to be. I'm embarrassed by it. I, we make sure that the employees that work for us now are our staff that they that we've all learned from that bad experience. We learn from the bad experience. <laughs> and you know, it's it's also like I, I was all excited. My brother in law wanted to go shooting, uh, tournament shooting. So I competition. So I said, Okay, I'll go. And I went there and I, I couldn't do it because everybody was so tactical. They were so the words they used, they were gonna go bust some caps and all this other stuff. And it turned me off and I have never went since. Yeah. And I'm a competitive person. I like to, to do that. But there's a lot of things we learn and you know we need to uh listen to people. Never buy a purse for your wife. Amen to okay? that. Never buy it. he has but tried that before. One it's other, a bad plan. Yes. One other thing and then I'll let you guys have it. the um if if the men out there would work with the women and get the women shooting, then they could buy any gun they want for the rest of their life. Because <laughs> and vice versa. get get the women or the men, either one, yeah. get them involved. And then when they say, Hey, I need a new gun, okay, let's go get one. If they have the money, mm -hmm. they'll go get one. Yeah. Whereas before the guy kept his guns in the closet and right. the wife you know, oh, that was her. She cooks. She doesn't play with guns. Oh my gosh. I, I, that's the way it you was. You are so dangerous. Was it yourself. that way or not? <laughs> was it? It was. Yes. And so a guy had to kind of sneak to get a new gun. Now it's like, oh, if you get him involved, it's, hey, we're going to the gun shop today, buy another gun. Okay. So, so on that point, um, <laughs> young married couple building your household uh do you guys play nice do you share the same firearms or do you have we, specific his and hers well we came in to well we got married in december so we did come in having our own guns but we share um That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely share and and rolando uh, built my ar and i let him play with my CZ and vice versa. I, I shot, shoot with his Canik. So we just, you know, it's everything, every, all of his stuff is mine and, and vice versa. And, and he can play with my stuff too. So <laughs> no, we definitely share. We definitely share. Do you have a, and, do you have a, do you have a dream gun? Um, I don't, not really. Well, I mean, I do, but I, I, I'm one of those people. I'm, I'm, I try to be practical, but I'm, I've been oogling a vector. I might get one, um, but I, I'm trying to be practical. So uh, we don't have a Glock yet. Um, so I'm, I'm, you know, that end of the world scenario, which is never going to happen. But one of those things is like everyone has spare Glock mags everywhere. So I told him last week, I'm like, you know, we really should just get a Glock just in case, you know, I mean, how many spare Glock mags does everybody have? Millions of them. So yeah. Uh, that's probably going to be one of our next purchases, but I, I know I'll get myself something fun, um, down the road. I, I got to shoot, um, a vector at uh, shot show in January and I've, I'd always liked how it looked. So I think I'm going to end up getting one of those. Awesome. <laughs> so awesome. cool. And I think that's a brilliant way to think about it, you know, in that prepper mindset that, you know, mm -hmm. if, if all things go to heck, um, mm -hmm. The, the spare Glock mags are a good way to think about it. Um, it's always where I always get locked up in my brain is, you know, okay, so what if mine is a nine millimeter and all the ammo, the only ammo I can find is 22. Like, what do I do? So I, I get wrapped around that wheel way too much. I like 22s because you can put 500 rounds in your front pocket. This is true. <laughs> you know, you I just like have the to be 22s a better shot. Yeah. Because I, I've had the pleasure of, introducing guns to a few people who were previously anti-gun and um the women tend to be afraid of the mm -hmm. ar for some reason so what we did is we converted um my ar i have a conversion kit and make it 
to shoot 22. So they get to handle it and shoot it with no recoil and they think it's so much fun. And then they're like, okay, they get over that fear and then, okay, now we can shoot it with the real ammo. So I think it's a great learning tool for sure. Absolutely. And for that exact reason, I think you you picked the right gun to have displayed behind you because <laughs> we're talking about, you know, reaching the middle space. We're talking about reaching people that might be otherwise nervous around or afraid of um, this whole topic and much less, you know, actually handling a firearm and going out to the range. And if we aren't introducing people, then it's all just a bunch of rhetoric, you yeah. know, so... Mm-hmm really appreciate what you and uh, your hubby, Rolando, are doing. So um, as we go out, please tell folks, how can they tune into your podcast? How can they find you now that you are back on social media (laughs) and uh, follow all the stuff that you guys do? Well, our podcast is on YouTube, Spotify, and all the great places you can find podcasts. Um, We are live on YouTube on Sunday nights at 7 p.m. And our channel is Locked and Loaded Latinos. That's the and is an ampersand, so Locked and Loaded Latinos. And you can find me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Parlay with my handle Latina Locked and Loaded. And my husband is Puerto Rican Pistolero on all those as well. And I'd like to edit myself. I said uh, gun control in Venezuela was in the 90s. It was actually in the 2000s. 12. So that's actually even closer yes. and more. That's when they relevant. started the gun control. It's 2012. That's 2012. Yeah. 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 No, it didn't take very right. long, did it? Yeah. It seems like it should have been the 90s. It seems like it should have been farther away for the amount yes. of change and destruction that has taken place yes. um, since then. But well, even for Mexico, that. Mexico had a, a con- they have a constitution. Mm-hmm. And in 1930s, you could have a gun, you could have any gun according to the Mexican constitution and they just oh. removed it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, let's not have that happen here in the yeah. U S let's, let's keep <laughs> talking and keep uh, influencing our, in our spheres of influence and trying to reach beyond. And it's, it's that important. Look at Venezuela. It like in real time happening right now. Uh, Cause people always like to say that, well, you know, that was back in a, you know, in the mothball days. No. We don't, you know, that would never happen today. Oh, really? Let's talk to Venezuela, right? Exactly. All righty, ma'am. Thank you so much for all you do. Uh, keep talking and uh, we will definitely have you and uh, Roland- Rolando back on soon. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Bye-bye. We'll see you. Bye-bye. All well, right. yeah, brought back memories when, you know, she said she'd take them out and do the 22 first. Yes. And that was another stupid thing that we used to do. Yeah, and I, I was say wondering we, if you were going to bring them. Not just me, but we, <laughs> the people in the gun industry, we yeah. would find the biggest cannon yeah. that we had. Yeah. And we would uh, have them shoot that first. Mm. And Because it was so funny right, for us. It, right, yeah. Terrifying then, for them. Then I, you know, as you get educated and you learn, which even at 65, I can learn still, I'm seeing. Mm-hmm. When you have a beautiful wife that can teach you, you learn stuff. Oh. Anyway, we Trying had to make a. Nice with me. We had a Too shoot. Too late, knuckle dragger. <laughs> we had a shoot <laughs> that we took like 25 people to. I don't remember the exact amount. And they were never, they have never shot a gun in their life. And we had. Uh, like six or seven tables of guns out and we started with the 22s and we made ourselves up to machine guns and even a 105 howitzer at the very end true story and and so we had an instructors at every table mm-hmm. one at a time very safe and they started with the 22s mm-hmm. and all the 25 people or whatever there was there went from the 22 all the way up to the m60 machine gun mm-hmm. And if I would have started them at, let's say, a 45 caliber pistol, I'm sure that at least 5 or 10% would have dropped out. Mm-hmm. And this so. is even, um, some people brought their children, Yep. right? And I think that's always a huge win because the earlier we can start educating kids about gun safety and uh, to respect the firearm because it's not, you know, like just a toy. It's not like in video games where the guy you just shot is going to stand up in the next scene and be fine and, you the kids know, don't understand continue that. on. They, young kids might not understand that. So 
So teaching them that is, is super important. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, we were all kids once. And when you're curious, you do things that maybe you're not supposed to do, mm -hmm. right? So take the curiosity away from the guns. Mm -hmm. Teach Absolutely. Them, teach them. And the taboo, right. please don't make guns taboo. Right. Cause they're going to go <laughs> after it. They're, they're, yes. It's just a kid. That's a natural thing that kids do. Yeah. So teach them because if, even if you don't have guns in your house, mm -hmm. how about your next door neighbor? That's okay. You, you know, That's so, okay. you know, yeah. we keep going back to that. It's like, that, uh, we don't teach <clears throat> our children to, to swim cause we don't have a pool. Like that sounds like the stupidest thing right. that would ever come out of a person's mouth. Right. Since I don't have a pool, there's no way they're ever going to encounter a body of water and no reason that they would ever need to learn how to swim. And yeah, what about what? covers on, you know, covers on outlets of your house? You can have all over your house, but what about when you go to the grocery store and the kids w wandering around the walls and sees these outlets? Oh, okay. Gotcha, you know? gotcha, gotcha. So, or the neighbor's <clears throat> house or right. grandma's house. Or, yeah, yeah, it could be anything. So yeah. right. um, teach them. Don't just try to, you know, shield them. <clears throat> right. But anyway awesome stuff we've got to roll on out of here but um talking about the election coming up the 2020 election talking about the fact that one of the two presidential candidates i mean it it's going to go to one or the other right it's going to be trump or it's going to be biden that's where we're at in in the timeline uh Trump hasn't been amazing on guns. We can't, we can't with a straight face say that he's been amazing on guns. I mean, we've had the bump stop stock ruling uh, while he was um, president. We've had lots of talk and movement towards red flag gun Whatever laws. Whatever happened to the That's suppressor thing? Good. You know, we thought we were going to get the suppressor law. The whole gun muffler, suppressor, yeah. silencer, whatever, you know, you want to It just got suppressed. It. Nobody's got suppressed. talking about it anymore. Um, so he hasn't been amazing. Let's not have rose-colored glasses about it. Let's call it what it is. But now let's look at Biden. Biden just wrote up this past week, wrote up, this is my platform on firearms. And it's, he's a gun prohibitionist. Whoever he used to be or used to pretend he was going to be or whatever, we have to take him at his word. When someone, somebody just recently said this to me. It's a, it's a quote, but I don't know where it came from. When someone tells you who they are, believe them. Believe them. Believe Joe that he is of this idea, like Beto O'Rourke, that they do want to prohibit gun ownership. They do want to reach into your home and remove something that you legally, rightfully, responsibly own just because it happens to be a gun should not make any difference no matter how rabidly against guns you are you should take the word gun out and just listen to what they're proposing what they think is something that's so worthy that they're campaigning on it for the highest office in the land that is so right. terrifying and so dangerous so they're it basically should, saying it we're should not, end his co his political right. career. What they're saying is for they're having not, said it, they're not going to follow the constitution. That's what they're saying. That Thank is you. what he, he said. I want to run for president, and I guarantee if you, I run for president and I win, we will not follow the constitution. That is what he's saying to to you. Exactly. Hey, you know, and um, the, at the same time they're going to take an oath to protect the constitution. They're telling you right out of the gate. Yes, I'm planning to lie to you, and you're going to be like, Yeah, I'm voting for that. Yeah. Well, I this show is going to air probably after Joe Biden has already announced who his running mate is, but I got a little uh, secret and I found out who the running mate's going to be early. <laughs> I feel a punchline coming on. No, uh, it's cake pop. It's corn pop. Corn pop. <laughs> cake pop. Where do you come up with this stuff? Where does he come up with this stuff? <laughs> I, don't know. I just put Either myself one. in Biden's shoes for ow, that hurt for just a second. And corn pop is going to be the running mate for Joe Biden. Be careful because corn pop, he don't like no constitution. I don't know. Oh, heavens to Murgatroyd cake pop. That was the best one ever. I'm a, that's a hashtag. Cake, cake pop. Cake pop's his son. Cake pop. 
That's Hashtag. Good. All right. We got to get out of here. Too much silliness. Um, thank you to our amazing yes. listeners, whether you're uh, watching us on video on YouTube or GunStreamer or OpsLens, or whether you're listening to the audio only version on our website, we value you. Yeah. Your time is your most finite resource. And when you spend it with us, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, the audio only version is at gunfreedomradio.com. Click the on demand tab and binge listen to your heart's content all of the episodes we have posted there. And if you're listening audio, you don't know that Danny was just totally mocking me. No, I was uh, not. Yeah. And uh, if you uh, click the guest tab, you get to see pictures and photos and links and bios of all of our guests that we've hundreds ever had on. Hundreds of guests. Hundreds. Hundreds of them. And they all Amazing have people. information that you need. Yeah, they're, they're experts in their field. And so, you know, we're not talking theory here. We're talking actual experience in, in whatever their area is, hunting or politics or um, the actual tools themselves. And it's a tremendous resource. Why are we limited we to their hate field? It. We don't hate it when you spend time there. Why are we limited to their field? They might be experts in af past their field too. Well, sure. Absolutely. You if said, they're experts, then, said they're experts, then that would their be their field. field as well. If they're yes, experts, then right. that's part of their field. Anyway, there's some valuable information in there. Mr. Cake Pop. All right. So. He's a bad dude. Oh, my gosh. Thank you to our awesome guest today, uh, Joe Rosalie, Johanna Rosalie, Latina Locked and Loaded. They're awesome. Uh, yes, she what and her doing, husband, you know, they uh, just the decided, Puerto Rican Pistolero. Boom, I'm going to do this. It's fantastic. That's what moves the needle um, in whatever direction. And they're trying to move the needle back to freedom, back to shall not be infringed. And that I, I definitely honor. Are we All infringed right. on now? Oh my gosh, are we infringed on yes, now? Yes, we are infringed. It's insanity. You know, to think that we have, we are infringed. Every single gun law, every single restriction on your right, every single hurdle you have to jump through, every time you're asking someone else's permission to own a life-saving tool, that's an infringement. Every single one of them. We are so far off the mark from where our founders intended for us to be. They fought, they bled, they starved, and they died to write this document. And in that document, which is our constitution, for those of you who can't see that I'm holding it, and our Bill of Rights. In that document is our Second Amendment. And in the Second Amendment, they took the time to write the gun rights for dummies clause. You can't screw this up clause shall not be infringed. Those four words mean something and we and treat them like <clears throat> they're worthless. And we've got to go back. We've got to understand our history and why it was so important for our founders to um, include those words. And people remember, this thing was written in what, 1776, 76, right? It, it was not infringed on until 1934. Look how many years that was fine. Everything was great. What happened in 1934 that some government guy decided, hey, we got to slowly start chipping away at this second amendment i think there were some other some other infringements between then and now but um it's it, that's a deeper longer discussion and something we should something we should talk about we need to find an expert in that field and and bring them on Where's but george we've got a, george washington i know he's got a great picture on the front of our constitution mm. but all right until next time Pray for our nation. Yes. Pray for our leaders. Most of them. Our representative. What did you say? <clears throat> Most of them. All of them, Dan. All of them. Even the ones you don't like. Especially the ones you don't like. All right. <laughs> I don't believe you. Please don't. Please don't believe you. Not on this. <laughs> All right. Be good to each other. Have a great week. And God bless. Bye-bye.